Hey guys, so today I thought I would sit down and film a video all about traveling with a toddler. Um, a daunting prospect, but it's actually not too bad if you plan ahead, in my opinion. So all of this is based on my experience. Um, my little girl River is 18 months old now and we've traveled with her a lot um, since we've had her. And I have to say, of all the ages so far, a toddler is the hardest age to fly with or be on a train with or just generally travel with. Um, and I think that's probably true going forward as well because they are mobile and they can walk but they are not allowed to walk and they don't understand why they can't walk. So um, it can be a little bit tricky. Um, this uh, trip, we just got back from our summer holiday in Portugal, which was super nice. Apart from being puked on on the plane, I'll get to that in a minute. And I'm trying not to waffle in this video, so I will um, keep it short, um, which was lovely. But it's the first time I've flown on my own with River. So I wanted to show you some of the things that have really helped me in terms of um, planning and gear and all of that jazz. So, first off in terms of gear, um, big shout out goes to the Baby Zen Yo-Yo Buggy. Um, we actually bought one of these right before we flew this time and I had resisted and resisted and resisted because we had another travel buggy. Um, but I have to say after being in so many situations where you've land um, and you don't get your buggy back until you get the rest of your luggage back and there's a huge customs queue and you have to walk really far. I was on my own, I was like, I, there's no way I can carry all my stuff and carry river and then if we get stuck in for an hour in customs or whatever. It has happened to us before when there's been two of us and when she was smaller so it wasn't so bad. Um, but that buggy for me, I, I was super super impressed with it. They are expensive for what they are but the quality is amazing and you, they literally fold up into nothing and you can take them on the plane with you so you have your buggy as you walk off the aircraft. Amazing, amazing for us and I 100% rate it, but they are expensive so not necessarily something that everyone would choose to splash out on depending on how much you travel and how much you kind of value that ease as opposed to having a baby carrier. So for me, I'm a petite person, like carrying a like 18 month old baby is is quite heavy as well as all the bags and everything so um that we really rated and then the car seat that we take with us we always take a car seat with us um because if you get one from the hire car company they're usually really expensive a lot of the time they charge you like 10 euros a day um which adds up to pretty much the same as you could probably buy a car seat for um we took with us the urban kanga and now this won't this won't be like everyone's cup of tea because it is a um seat belt uh car seat so it's the it's not as safe as using an isofix um so if you want that extra safety like take an isofix seat or hire an isofix seat river's normal seat is huge and super heavy and not something we would travel with this is a really good option for short trips from say like the airport to the villa and um, it's not something we would use on like long distance journeys but super super useful in terms of being portable and it's the first time we've actually used this seat um, it looks really small and doesn't look comfy but actually she slept in it great and she really liked it so it works really well for us previous to that we've always used her just like baby car seat but she's too big for that now um, so yeah two bits of like big kit that we really rated in terms of travel. The other thing I would say with the Urban Kanga car seat is that it comes with a bag, it's not a great quality bag, but it comes with a bag that is too big for it. So it gives you a lot of room for packing the extra stuff in there, which is something that when your toddler is under two, definitely make the most of because um, it's basically a free piece of luggage. Um, they don't check what's in there. Well, they haven't ever checked what's in mine. So um, that's another thing, regardless of the age of the baby, if you're checking in a car seat, get a bag for it and put loads of the baby stuff in there as well so I usually pack like all of River's clothes around the car seat it also helps to protect it from getting like bashed about so um, that's super useful that's like the big equipment that we take with us um, sometimes we do travel with a travel cot as well depending on where we're going but um, this time we didn't because there was a travel cot at the villa um, the other thing I would really really recommend um, are these baby headphones I've seen a few people talk about these before and I hadn't got them until now because River wasn't really at the age where she was super into like cartoons and stuff and we don't tend to give her an iPad. It's the other thing I was going to say, preloaded cartoon iPad is amazing for flights especially if you're on a longer flight where you know that she's, they're going to get bored of the toys that you're taking for them um, and also for dinners when you're out. An iPad is always our last resort, like I hate giving her cartoons but sometimes it's the only thing that will like 
calm them down in a situation where you're stuck on an aeroplane so um yeah preload pre-downloaded netflix and the wrap headphones if you guys haven't seen these before it's basically like a fleece headband like this i mean i look super cool right now um they're actually quite cute um river will not wear normal headphones we tried um some baby headphones as well and she absolutely hated them these she doesn't mind and it means that she can listen to the cartoons and it distracts her she was watching this for at least an hour on the flight back um, so that was good. The other thing I would 100% recommend in terms of like pre-planning is to be super organized, but I would say um, when you are packing milk, if your baby is on cow's milk or formula, if you're breastfeeding, obviously it's super, super convenient still, River is not. Um, she drinks cow's milk when she's at home. Um, however, when we travel, I will buy like the toddler formula for her because it means that you ha don't have to take like um, cow's milk with you. Um, there are a few different options for this as well because the other thing I would 100% recommend taking with you but we don't take this in hand luggage is one of these um, insulated bottles. This is a Swell one but you can get them from like TK Maxx for much cheaper than you can buy the Swell brand ones. These will keep your milk cold for like 12 hours so if you're going out to the beach when you're there these are really useful to take with you um, in terms of like the milk not getting hot and gross in the bottle. Um, but like I said, instead of doing that, we um, usually when we're traveling switch back to powdered formula because it's so much more convenient in terms of it not going gross because you can mix it and then instantly use it. You don't have to take like a cool bag with you or whatever. So um, that I would 100% recommend when you're traveling, but also to take your baby bottles and your like um, water cup for the baby empty through security and then fill them up with the, at the water fountain when you get through just makes security a whole lot easier the other thing I would recommend is taking like mini Tupperware um, things you can take the uh, like little snacks for them and stuff take as many snacks as you can as many snacks as you can especially if you've got a baby that likes a snack a lot rivers more of like a meal milk meal person rather than snack 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 meal but um, she definitely like gets to the point sometimes where she's super hungry and she needs her food and if you're out and about or at a restaurant or waiting it's just useful to be able to have snacks with you and taking mini tupperware with you is also really good because it means you can use them on your holiday so if you go to the beach and you want to take some raisins or whatever um they're just useful to have so we have these tiny ones from systema um that i use when i'm at home as well but they're really really useful for traveling because they're small and you can kind of pop them in your pocket or whatever um the other thing i would also say is the number one most useful item i swear since she's been a baby is this blanket now this is just a like a muslin blanket it's very similar to like just a swaddle just a normal swaddle blanket this is quite a nice one we got as a gift when she was born from a brand called willa and the bear which i really like it's got the neon on it it's like a triple layer muslin like cotton blanket River doesn't really use blankets anymore, but this when you're traveling is so useful. Um, what did I use this for on this holiday? Mopping up sick when she puked all over me on the plane. Before that, I used it as a little kind of um, blanket underneath her and over her because it's quite big. So she was like snuggled up in it asleep and then she woke up and puked and then I mopped it all up. Um, they wash really well. So as soon as I got there, I washed it and then we definitely used it on the beach as a blanket for her to sit on. Um, I use it as a shade over her buggy when it's sunny and the shade cover doesn't quite cover far enough because it's, you know, light and breathable and it's white so it's not going to get too hot. Um, I use it as a blanket over her when she's sleeping, use it as a picnic blanket on the way to the airport when we stopped at the services. Um, just, yeah, so, so useful and 100% um, worth taking with you if you've retired all your swaddle blankets because you've got a toddler and you don't really use them, definitely take one with you on the plane because they are so useful. Um, the other thing I would 100% recommend is having like a, um, a roll of nappy sacks. We don't actually use nappy sacks, I know a lot of people do, but personally I just think it's like wasted plastic, but I do always make sure I buy a roll of the biodegradable, I actually use dog poo bags because they're more like easily available in the biodegradable material that's not like just thick plastic um i always have a roll of them in my um like baby bag anyway because they're just useful if she ever poos on something i, I don't use them for nappies but i use them um for sicky clothes pooey clothes um extra spare food or what, like it just think they're just useful to have when you're traveling 100 percent take nappy sacks um and then the other thing is to take like a pre-packed 
toy kit. And this time we actually took this little box, which is from L'Occitane, I actually got this um, as part of a, a product launch send out. As soon as it arrived, I was like, this has got someone's name on it. It's like a little suitcase. She absolutely loves it. Trick is to buy them a, a few new toys or take a few of their toys away before you go um, so that they're like new to them or have like a set of traveling toys. Either way, like a little box of toys. Um, so they're new and they're exciting for them. So the ones that I actually found to be really good, and these are um, actually normally really expensive, but I found these in TK Maxx. These are um, Tegu, it, which is a brand, actually a really cool brand. So they, um, for every tree, they're obviously wooden, they're magnetic wooden blocks. And for every tree that they chop down to make these, they plant 100 trees, which I think is pretty cool. Um, either way, full price, these are supposed to be like 70 quid. I had never heard of them before I saw them in TK Maxx, and I got this set for 30, which is still expensive. But these were worth their weight in gold when we were traveling, because not only are they a cool company, obviously, like, I, I've just told you the story, I'm a fan of that. Magnetic toys, when you're traveling, are amazing because they stick together. <laughs> like, even this, like this is so useful they all stick together as opposed to the rest of them which roll around in the box they're just so much easier to keep together in a bag to keep together in a box like just they're just very very good for traveling and i have to say even the older kids um we were with my niece and nephew and they were like whoa these are cool like obviously they're baby toys but they were like playing with them as well um so yeah these are super cool magnetic blocks and if you don't want to splash out and buy an expensive set like this um definitely look at magnetic toys in general because they're quite good for traveling because they're harder to lose and then the other thing i got her were just some wooden animals that stack up these actually worked out really well for her because she's at that age now where she's learning the name names of animals and she really likes them but whatever their kind of favorite toys are the other thing that is completely invaluable when traveling with a toddler a sticker book like this has seen better days after this week this sticker book came out still got stickers left in it too i love the fact it has no stickers on any of the pages that it's supposed to have stickers on because River just, she sticks them in there and then she rips them out and rips the tails off and stuff. Really affordable, spend a few pounds, buy a sticker book. This came out on both flights for at least an hour, every night at dinner, lunch, everything. Whatever your little one is into, definitely like take note of that and like make a little like set of toys. But if you haven't tried them with a sticker book yet, I would really, really 100% recommend that. And then things for when you're there. Another thing travel wise is a travel um, car door cover thing. This seems like excessive and OTT, but we actually use this in our car day to day. We don't have one of the ones with cartoons on because I just, this is better. And we, Mike and I switch between my car and his car quite a lot. So this is quite good because it's just easy to move. It stretches to different sizes of car windows, things like that. This we just got on Amazon. I think I have two of them, but obviously I only keep one on her side of the car. I'm not sure what the other one's got to, but um, this is really good. And also just, it folds up super small. You can just chuck it in with the car seat and it shades them when it's sunny. That's definitely worth taking. The other thing I would 100% recommend are these reusable um, swim nappies. Now, a lot of the time, I have to say, River doesn't wear a nappy. Like, on the beach, we just have her with a bare bottom and, like, a long t-shirt on. That's the other thing I would 100% recommend. A long t-shirt. I'll get to that in a minute. Um, but the swim nappies, these are amazing. We've used these so much. In our experience, having River... She's never pooed in a swim nappy, okay? And swim nappies are basically made for poo. So when a baby wees in a swim nappy, they're not absorbent, it just goes straight through into the water. So um, kiddie pools really are full of pee from babies because they, like, if they pee, it goes in the water. It doesn't stay in the nappy. Um, they're basically made for containing the poop. Um, but these are really good because obviously they're reusable and you're not wasting a swim nappy. But they're also... Um, they actually work like they're very very good they're comfortable for them to wear they're cute looking um i would recommend these ones which are the jojo mama baby ones she's still in the six to twelve months you want them to be tight so they have to be tight around the legs and tight around here um normally now she's in 12 to 18 but these definitely come up big like she had no chance of fitting in these at six months or well she fit in them obviously but they were like baggy so the poop would have come straight out the sides um, so if you are in um, like a shared pool and they have to be wearing like a, a swim nappy all the time, I would really recommend these. It means you're not chucking um, swim nappies away unnecessarily because they basically, unless they poo in them, they're like, they haven't really been used. They just get wet and then you throw them away. Um, so yeah, these are more expensive. These are about £12 each. 
um, however I think worth the investment but if you want to get more affordable ones I found these ones in TK Maxx the material is much more um, plasticky and not as good but they still do the job um, and I think these are on sale I got them for like three pounds so um, she has a couple of those um, which I would 100% recommend I also recommend taking an oversized t-shirt now this is disgusting and dirty and literally stinks because I've taken it out of the wash to show in this video but it's this specific t-shirt is so good um, I would recommend getting a lightweight, you know that kind of cotton that's like distressed? This is from a brand, this was actually quite an expensive t-shirt, I bought it when I was in LA, it's from a brand called Tiny Whales. Um, and it's in age three, so I get it in at least a year older than she needs to be in. Um, and it's that like lightweight cottony material. And these are so much easier to pop on than having the like long sleeved um, zip up like full on suit. Riv still has one of those, so if she's going to be out in the sun a lot and needs that extra protection, 100%. But if she's just popping in, like if she's on the beach or she's popping into the sea and then going back into the shade, she's obviously got SPF on as well, but these are just so much easier to get on and off her, so much more comfortable to, for her to wear. And I find the ones that are two pieces tend to like ride up and then her belly's hanging out anyway. So um, baggy t-shirt on the beach with a hat on and swimming nappies and she's good to go. 100% recommend taking one of those. And then the last thing I wanted to recommend that we found really useful is a roll-on sun cream or a stick sun cream. So we take um, spray and cream as well, but I think for like on-the-go top-ups, the, top the roll-on sun creams are so useful. Um, I find it really hard with cream to like get, she hates having sun cream put on her, especially on her face. So I find the roll-ons really easy to like get her cheek and then get her nose and her forehead and then rub it in as opposed to trying to do it with your hands and put it on with your hands. Um, we found it really good and we used one from Child's Farm. Although I have to say the Child's Farm sun cream, it's good. Like she didn't burn, she didn't like, it works, but it's very greasy. The sun cream that we use normally is the Think Baby one and they don't do that in a roll-on yet. Um, but I would 100% recommend getting a roll-on because it's just easier or a stick, really good as well. So that's it for my recommendations of traveling with a toddler. The main thing I found is just to try and be as organized as you can. I am naturally quite an organized person, I really like it. I feel like if you're watching this video, you probably are gonna be organized traveling with a toddler because you're looking up like, tips for traveling with a toddler um, but that really is what makes the most difference is having everything like organized and to hand and there's also the obvious things like take a backpack changing bag especially if you're traveling on your own things like that I think are, are too obvious right in terms of like it's just easier to have a rucksack instead of a bag over your shoulder when you're holding a toddler um, so yeah they're my recommendations for traveling with a little one um, feel free to add to my tips um, in the comments below definitely let me know if you have any um, tips or anything you would like to add because I'm always looking for more um, ways to make my life easier when I'm on a plane with the little monkey she's actually she was good she was really good this time but um, mainly thanks to all this stuff um, so yeah hope you guys enjoyed it and I'll see you very soon bye